Hi, this is Spencer, and you're listening to The Other Show. You know, when I thought it was impossible to fall in love even more with my wife... Oh, it's one of these shows. It got deeper. <laughs> and that's what Tell she us said. More. Anyway. Oh, oh, wow. It's one of these shows. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I just wanted to throw a curveball. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm confused, and I like it. Go on. No. So the other day, meaning Easter, I was having a conversation with my wife, and we were just talking about mm-hmm. how much we love funeral potatoes. Like, oh, yeah. love, mm. love funeral potatoes. It doesn't matter who makes it, right? If there's potatoes and there's cheese in in the dish at all, they're great. They're 100% no, I'm gonna great. I'm stop you there. But <laughs> there's always that one person in the ward that you cannot eat their funeral potatoes. Either it's their well, vegan well, funeral potatoes or, are they or too they're crunchy on the onions. Oh, okay. Or, yeah, that's it. Uh, the potatoes aren't cooked all the way through, mm-hmm. and you can tell. So I think, Josh, your scale is like, I'm good with anything. Spencer, mm-hmm. you're the foodie of the room, so you're mm-hmm. going to make sure, you know, you, you have to have quality. We get it. I like to shake it up. Well, oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, we know that. <laughs> but, you see, the thing is, is we had seriously a conversation between Marianne and I for like, it was a good half hour conversation about all the things that we love about funeral potatoes, all the variations and everything. And then she stops for about 10 seconds in silence, right? And, you know, I kind of look at her and I'm like, what are you thinking about, babe? And she's like, you know what? I want to crash funerals. (laughs) And I'm like, what? (laughs) Like, what? She's like, yeah, because then we can go get funeral potatoes whenever we want. (laughs) Josh, you now realize this is two weeks in a row we've talked about funerals and funeral potatoes. I, I know, but who cares? Easter was just last week. <laughs> okay. This does is she want to Does she want to crash like the service? It or does she want to crash right when everyone's getting out and then they're hugging and they're like, okay, and now we're going to have some refreshments. Knowing and... my knowing my wife, it would be Can, the have whole you been thing. been to a funeral? Yeah, I've been to a funeral. <laughs> It's not like we have like the eulogy and it's like, and now we're going to break for refreshments. No, you go to the cemetery, you have the gravesite, and then the family and invited come back for a luncheon. Yeah. It's but not sometimes like refreshments. Hey, hey. we're going to have some sherbet and seven up in the foyer. Spencer, sometimes there are cousins you don't know about yep. that you can always go in there for funeral potatoes. I'm just hey, saying where there's actually, a will, there's a well, way. That legit happened at my grandma's funeral. Mm-hmm. My little siblings have never met their cousins from Washington, and they're like, "Who who are those people? See really? who are the, the yeah who are who are the people over there?" And my dad, without skipping a beat, well, you know how your grandma was really charitable. We just invited some homeless people to come in and eat some food. Oh, okay, that and would be Josh's wife. Bought it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because they were actually cousins. <laughs> They were actually cousins. You actually got me too. That's a joke that keeps on giving. That's awesome. <laughs> you gave me hope there that I could get away with this much easier. Oh, you absolutely so, could get away with it. People don't ask. So, no. Josh, we know that we know the rule of getting mm-hmm. away with murder. Not literal mm-hmm. murder, as we're talking about funerals, right? But is acting like you own the place, right? Mm-hmm. I've said this before with movie screenings. Is I like walk by, and Spencer, you've been with me. Josh, you've been with me. You walk by mm-hmm. the person taking the tickets, and I say what well, I say oppress and then they go oh yeah it's number three right it's theater three you just Wait, walk does in that mean with i you. could do that with you even if i don't have press uh absolutely what? so i mean you may not have a guaranteed seat but you walk in like you own the place and this is the case probably for getting into clubs mm-hmm. not the clubs are my scene this is the case i'm sure for getting refreshments after a funeral is yeah. i mean that's how i got into the the raising canes club is I acted like I what? belonged there, and they gave me a card, even. Wait, you walked into a Raising Cane's? Yeah, I said I'm in the club, give me the discount, and they gave me a card, even. What? Is this uh, Post Malone's Raising Cane's, or is this just like a, a no, grand just... opening? No, it was Raising Cane's here in Riverdale. And they have, a, cl- they have a club? Yeah. Well, is this it going a... right over your head? Is Anybody the... can join the club. I was going to say, is this like a kid's <laughs> club? <laughs> yeah. Is Hazel a part like of this? Frequent customer club. <laughs> 
I mean, do you have to pay like your, your dues in this club? No. And it's they're... like a punch card. Like every tenth visit, you get a free wing or something like that. Well, I thought there'd be like free... an initiation. Yeah, under those under those conditions, then I'm pretty sure I'm still a part of the BK Kids Club. Oh, me too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> you still get a kids meal on your birthday. I need to redeem a bunch of those. But anyway, <laughs> can you no, backdate? Uh, yeah, it's Burger King. It's not worth the effort. Anyway, that's actually their slogan. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Marianne and I actually did kind of sit down and talk about what would the rules be to get be able to get away with eating funeral potatoes going to the luncheon. And yes, you would have to sit throughout the whole service. You would have to either go to the grave site or stay at the church and wait for them to come back, right? Where you yeah. can either help or whatever. or And also to Spencer make sure disagrees. that you're not outed. To make sure you're not outed, though, you also have to study the obituary. Like, that's a must. Like, you have to mm-hmm. at least get the key things down. And then go for the aunt or the uncle that either don't have a lot of kids or, you know, maybe too many. No, you don't even okay. need to do that. Trust me, I've been to enough funerals in the last year to tell you, just show up when they're serving food, like either before the prayer or after the prayer. If somebody from the family asks how you knew the deceased, say, oh, we're just in the ward and just mm. moved in. We're just here to help. And if somebody from the ward asks, you can say, this is my great aunt or uncle. Yeah, but I also need to know who's in the ward. Or, or even better, you could just say, cousin oh you can tell who's in the ward because everybody who's in the ward is serving in the kitchen yeah that's true serving yeah that's true yeah you need like a vague enough lie to be like oh i served my mission in the area or and not like it's everyone that dies is going to be lds right but you got to say something like oh they they, were in my my family out once Mm -hmm. my parents just say (laughs) if you want to avoid the ward talk you can just say they were my neighbor yes you don't need to say where just say they were my neighbor years ago. And then with mm. my luck, they never moved. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, so mm-hmm. Josh, here's no, what's but you interesting. Did. You moved away and kept in contact. The, the year is 2024. Uh, mm-hmm. That may date the episode if someone's listening later. And most people are kind of more introverted now. Most people would rather not go places where there are people. Mm-hmm. And your wife is saying, for free food, mm-hmm. funeral, funeral potatoes, potatoes. Mm-hmm. or maybe for the, the pure satisfaction of going to someone's funeral, she is willing to go face people and lie to their faces. Yeah. Yeah. People <laughs> grieving. We people also who think, are grieving. We also think that this might be the great, uh, like a great basis for a sequel to Wedding Crashers, you know? That's I mean, they true. did lead there. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Except for it's just you and your wife eating it like you'll be able to do a taste test of funeral potatoes and you'll be like, hey, the Christiansons over in Syracuse, they had the best funeral potatoes. Hey, maybe, maybe this is the sequel to the singles ward instead of what we <laughs> talked about in the bonus episode. I'm just saying that I might mean, not be, be a bad, a, a, a bad idea. It could be a B plot. <laughs> it's not a bad B plot. Yeah. <laughs> Just people. I, and here's actually, the, you know what I want to see, Josh. Uh huh. As, as winner of the chili cookoff, you should can talk to your your leaders to say, instead of a chili cookoff around the day of the dead and Halloween this year, let's do funeral potatoes. Uh, we also had that conversation uh, as well. Like we want <laughs> uh, funeral potato cookoff. So, mm-hmm. Josh, uh, we're going to create a workaround because I think you're investing way too much time for some really average potatoes. Okay, uh, uh, whoa, Here's... hold it. Yeah, I said it. Jesus said it. did not die <laughs> to give us average potatoes. <laughs> Wait, did are, are are we? Do we have funeral potatoes thanks to him? Yes, or resurrection oh, okay. potatoes if you're my mom. <laughs> you know, speaking of traditional Easter foods, I've got a question. Why ham on Easter, right? Oh, I mean, that is a good question. I would say because it's delicious. Can no, I just no, say no. that? And it's the Let most me just add non-Jewish this extra layer thing? Of context. Exactly. Easter is around the same time as Passover. In fact, it's determined because it's the first full moon after the vernal equinox after Passover. 
Mm-hmm. Right? So is this like a stick it to the man type of thing? Like, hey, we're going to eat ham. It kind of seems like it's a, like a. Well, first of all, ham has, I yeah. Mean, I was kosher this year. I made a brisket. Okay. Yeah. Cause you're not supposed to have pork, obviously. Uh-huh. Um, well, there actually is a reason, and I didn't just Google this, and I'm not just going to read this from Google, uh, but ham is a, tr- a traditional Easter food because it's rooted in the agricultural calendar. And so before refrigeration, pigs were often slaughtered in the fall, and the meat was preserved with salt and smoke through the winter. And by spring, mm-hmm. the preserved ham was ready to eat, making it a natural choice for cel- celebratory Easter feast. So, I mean, those are just my words. Um, uh-huh. If you want to uh, take totally. those, thank you, as, as you will. Thank you, Google. Are you sure it's not tied to a pagan holiday? Uh, every holiday is tied to a pagan uh, holiday. Yeah. Let's be honest. Welcome to Christianity. Mm. <laughs> but I think it's a perfect thing because you have Thanksgiving; it owns the turkey, right, or vice versa. No, uh, the uh, brisket. Well, well f- yes, because you're doing it right. All right, but traditionally, Spencer, we've got Thanksgiving turkey. Christmas, I would say, is pretty open to turkey or ham or soups prime or rib. you decide prime rib because once again you're smoking meat. Ew. What? That's well, for the Chinese, so, that's, yeah, or the that's Japanese. Summer's Japanese. At Lagoon. Okay. Chinese or Japanese? Get it right, Josh. That's racist. I'm, I'm <laughs> so say the joke. That I would I say, say nope. Uh, I would say now you know half a year past that, ham needs a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> is that just needs I'm, gonna write, I'm gonna ham write a kid's book called <laughs> ham needs a <laughs> it's about a baby pig no Church it's an o- it's an overstressed pig a nine to fiver and you know ham obviously <laughs> and his favorite season is spring yeah yeah but no, but no Easter it's favorite season is spring so before Easter, it goes to the bathtub with a toaster, and that's how you get the ham on Easter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my goodness. So, Spencer, uh, do you smoke ham? Or are oh, you just like, you know I'm going to make beef brisket, and we're fine? No, I'll, I'll smoke ham, but I won't smoke ham to do sliced ham. You do smoked ham, like get the whole ham shoulder mm-hmm. and smoke it like you would a pulled pork, and okay. you do pulled ham. Oh, that sounds so good. So freaking good. It's Oh, juicy. why have I not done that? You serve it on Hawaiian rolls with some coleslaw, oh, and it is like man. Easter in your mouth. <laughs> you lost me there. I, I like we because of the significance of the holiday. I don't think we can say that. So <laughs> Jesus did not die <laughs> for that quote we that. said. Yeah. <laughs> okay, real quick, real quick, because this is on top of my mind, and we can move on. Josh, just stay in the cemetery and wait for people to go to graveyards. And then follow mm-hmm. them back to the church. Don't go to the service yeah. or hang out at a church or drive by churches on Saturdays. Do I and do I drive myself? Do I follow like one of the cars or do I just yeah, hop in fo- somebody's car with them? No, follow the procession because here's the thing. If you get called out, yeah. someone's like, hey, how did you know my, my grandma? And then you're with Marianne and like you just – she starts crying. Like mm-hmm. un- like and you're just like trying to comfort her. You're like, I'm really mm-hmm. sorry. It, it's just – it's been a day. I think that's this could it. work. I think this could yeah, work. Anyways. Good. Yeah. So uh, anyways, back to Easter and all that fun stuff. <laughs> how, how was your Easter or, or Passover, Kent? Uh, we didn't do Passover this year. I was kind of disappointed. We generally do Passover every three years. And we'll do... Josh, it's, have you done the Seder, the Seder meal? I know we've talked about this before. Um, no, we actually... Isn't a Seder one of those like half goat, half humans? I, uh, that's a satyr, a satyr. And I'm pretty sure that's satanic. Yes. So Jesus did not <laughs> die for that yeah. either. <laughs> not true. Mr. Tumnus was part of an allegory for Jesus. So false. Yeah, but he's a betrayer. He's a Judas. Sounds like a Christian holiday <laughs> oh, <gosh>. to me. <laughs> Mr. Tumnus is Judas. <laughs> so many levels today. Oh, so many levels. Gosh. Levels of what? Sacrilege? <laughs> I think we're all going to hell anyway. Yeah. Yeah, funeral crashing, Easter jokes, whatever. <laughs> I don't even know where we were. <laughs> no, me neither. You know what? Let's let's just pick up somewhere different. Josh, do you have your uh, roulette wheel behind you? Uh, yes, I do actually. Can you can you can you grab that real quick? Mm-hmm. I have I it right just here. Need, you know. Okay on on your roulette wheel is red. Uh huh. Yellow. Mm-hmm. It's blue, or- it's and orange. Pink. And I. Orange. Oh, and it's fine. teal. Sorry. 
Oh, my goodness. And fuchsia. <laughs> Why did you buy the pastel wheel from Michael's? <laughs> it was cheap. Yeah. And I lost Spencer's other wheel. That's oh, true. Mm-hmm. You rude. I want it back. Um, so red is going to be a weird story. Mm-hmm. Pink is going to be a cute story. Mm-hmm. Fuchsia. And then orange. Fuchsia. Mm-hmm. Fuchsia. Mm-hmm. Fuchsia is going to be a random story. Okay. And then what's the other color on there? Teal. 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 Teal is going to be Josh reads a poem. I read a poem. One of my poems? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to write it. Here we okay. go. Here and we go. Kent gets to choose the topic. Okay, Spin it. Go. Oh, it doesn't have a clicking sound. That's lame. Oh, oh we'll what? In post. Oh, wait, no, click, I'm editing, click, so we're click, definitely click, not click, adding that in post. Click, 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 Big money, big money, big money. It's red. Red. Okay, so a serious post. <clears throat> Ooh, okay. This, this is one ser- comes out of Japan. Ooh, is it KFC? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Tokyo, Kyoto, an old plastic statue of Kentucky Fried Chicken founder Col- Colonel Harlan Sanders has been disposed of in Japan. The country's unit of the U.S. chain restaurant said Tuesday, ending the role it played as a lucky symbol since being recovered decades after it was tossed into the river in the 1980s. A a life-size statue was also known for the curse of Colonel after an incident in which jubilant baseball fans threw it into the Tombori River in Osaka during the 1985 championship run of the local favorite Hashin Tigers. The team failed to win another Japan series until last year when it ended a 38-year drought. Is that the team that Tom Selleck played for? I'm pretty sure it did. The Tashin's Tigers. Either that or it's a terrorist Or it's the Dragons. I can't remember. (laughs) Uh, KFC Holdings Japan Limited said the statue went through a ritual that is typically held for the repose of souls of old dolls at Sumiyoshi Tashi Shrine in the western Japan city March 8th. So it went to a place to exercise dolls that are possessed. Um, the president of the company attended the ritual and offered Japanese sake along with the chain's fried chicken. The Yokohama-based company said, "Nothing the statue contributed. If nothing, the statue contributed to the rising value of our brand name." In March 2009, the, ri- the statue was discovered in the river during construction work with its glasses and left hand missing. After being p- repaired, it was uh, displayed at the branch of the company in Osaka. And used for events, and there's even a picture of this this uh this colonel being purified. Um, if okay. you can kind of see that, um, but they're waving the big fan in front of it, and it's covered in moss and missing a hand. Looks like something straight out of Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, so there are they now putting it back up to stop? I mean, I know the curse ended last year when the Tigers won, but are they uh, no. now? They disposed of it. <gasps> For good. So, for good. Why? So they cleansed its soul through a ritual meant for possessed dolls, and then they, it's now junk, so oh. they, they got rid of it. They should oh have my gosh, sent you guys. it over here to Salt Lake City, the original we already have KFC. A, we have a statue at the uh, Salt Lake City KFC. We do? Yeah. yeah. I've never been. We yeah, should, should cleanse it. If we cleanse it, maybe the Jazz will no. finally win the championship. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. I know Bloomhouse is now going to make a haunted Colonel Sanders movie. And it's going to be a, like, th- that's how it's going to end. It's the Japanese need to clean it or cleanse it, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I could see this happening. And, and I would watch oh, it. Oh, and he I kills. Totally would. He kills would it be people. part of the Pooniverse? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. It would for sure be part of the Pooniverse. <laughs> uh, by the way, the team is the Chunichi Dragons in Mr. Baseball. Oh, okay. Thank, yeah. thank you, Mr. Movie. Okay. Josh, you want to spin again? Uh, yep, let's do it. All right, here we go. And I can vouch he's not just like throwing a USB drive on the ground and making yeah. a noise. Click, hey. click, 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 click. You look kind of like a DJ. Yep. I mean, anyone can be a DJ. I mean, I just have to push play. It's orange. Orange. Oh, this is very fitting for the random story. And Josh, you can relate. This comes from People Magazine. Are you calling me a published March twenty? Are you calling me a no. People Magazine subscriber because ma- and more like U.S. Weekly? No, but maybe a contributor to this article because March twenty third, twenty twenty four. Former Price is White, right? Per- Price is White. <laughs> <It's> definitely <laughs> Josh. It's true. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, based on some of the, the demographics of the show, you never know. Um, <laughs> former Price is Right producer reveals protocol for when excited contest- contest. Oh, man, I am struggling, guys. You're good. You're the newsreader uh, right now. Just take it. Former Price is White, Right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the, the, the Liberty Mutual commercial. Liberty, Liberty. <laughs> Can we, can we just say, though, that that would be the best game show for BET? <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. The Bryce is white. I, I want to see this <laughs> happen so many now. jokes <laughs> that I cannot say right now. <laughs> well, let's, let's continue because I haven't even gotten to the point of this article. Uh, former Price is Right producer reveals protocol for when excited contestants accidentally pee their pants. A former Price is Right producer tells people some of the show's behind-the-scenes secrets, including how they have protocols in place in case a contestant pees their pants. The idea of being on national television and winning big at bucks is pretty exciting, no matter who you are. That's why there used to be a protocol in place in case contestants got a little too enthusiastic when their names were called to come up and play, and they accidentally wet their pants. According to former Price is Right producer, I mean, looking at their demographic, Makes perfect sense. Most of them are in Depends or Josh. Uh-huh. <laughs> when I get there, they had a system in place in case someone peed their pants. Former producer Mike Richards tells people. Richards, who worked behind the scenes at places like Dick Clark Productions and Jeopardy, was at Price is Right when it transitioned from Bob Barker hosting to Drew Carey. I never saw it happen, but there were curtains and a blow dryer and a pair of sweats. Just in case, since we'd have to get on with the show. It wasn't there for the contestants. It was for Bob Barker, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> he was pretty old. Yeah. Wait, so so he's like spilling the beans of something that never happened Yeah. while he was but on the show? there was a protocol in place. Well, I mean, we have a protocol in place for the same thing here. <laughs> True. Listen, I mean, the thing is, before. the thing is, if if I got called up and I peed my pants, I would be the one that would just sit there in silence with with a wet crotch because I don't want to blow my moment, right? Like I would be the one that would make myself so uncomfortable that yeah. I, I guess it's kinda nice to be able to know that you have that option now. So so here's what I'm picturing is uh Josh, you're there with the three other people mm-hmm. and they're showing this lovely vanity, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, straight out of nineteen eighty seven, right? And it has like a Revlon uh, blow dryer and everything. And you're supposed to guess the value. Mm -hmm. And you guess $1. Mm -hmm. And guess what? You get it right. Ding, 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 ding. Josh, come on up. And you've peed. Mm -hmm. You just stay where you are. (laughs) Actually, I would do it on purpose just so that they could like warm up the blow dryer. (laughs) (laughs) Let's see how fast they are. (laughs) <laughs> We're all missing the critical fact here that Josh has actually been on The Price is Right. I haven't been a contestant, but I've been in the audience twice. Uh, so. Josh, I don't know why you went twice. I did it once, mm-hmm. and I hated it. Did you go I, for Bob Barker, or did you go for Drew Carey? It, it was in the Bob Barker days. It was spring yeah. break in college, and yeah. there were a bunch of us that went. And, like, you know, when you're sitting, you're there at 5 in the morning, right? Mm-hmm. And tell me if your your experience is any different. And we were all like so tired, but there's always that one guy and he was one of my roommates and he thought that he was being watched by producers for the four hours that we were waiting Mm -hmm. to actually sit down. And he had so much energy and I just wanted to punch him in the face the entire time. Mm -hmm. And it was really hot. There's no shade or anything. You're outside. And then they finally like do bring you into the producer line and they kind of interview you to see if you have kind of that charisma to get in there. And we had a group of like 12. They didn't pick one of us, not even yeah. the loud one. So what was your experience? Uh, so similar. We went yeah. with a bunch of my college friends and we actually mm-hmm. had about a group of 25. And usually okay. I think, I, I don't know what the threshold is, but usually if you have a big group, they usually will take one of mm-hmm. your group members. And yep. so we went down there kind of specifically for this one girl's birthday it was her 18th birthday or 19th birthday or something like that and uh, you know she kind of the same thing kind of playing the energetic one and everything Mm -hmm. and they totally took somebody else you know yeah i I, my friend uh tarnu was 
was there and he he goes he goes by his middle name because his first name is daddy's boy but he went what? by daddy's boy Wait, he's, what? he's he's black from new jersey and he totally played it up because he's like man they're gonna pick me if i use my real name like daddy's boy and he he just he played up every characteristic as well that he could think of to be the stereotypical you know black guy yeah. on the Price is Right. And was this, all, wait, was this Price is Right or Price is White? Uh, Price is White, actually. Okay, just checking. Okay, yeah. keep going. <laughs> <laughs> what would the rules be for that? I don't want to know. Okay, no, no, we're not going to go there. So he's but, he's hamming it up. Oh yeah, and then in the middle because you take commercial breaks and everything mm-hmm. uh, when you're taping. And then in the middle of those breaks, you know, Bob Barker gets up there and he talks. He takes questions from the audience. It's always about Happy Gilmore. Yes. And in the middle of each break, my friend Tarnu T, daddy's boy, yeah, wants to ask a question. And he's in, mm-hmm. like, we're in the back, right? I'm sitting right next to him. And he's like, Bob, 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 I got a question, Bob. Bob, how do I get my own TV show? How do I, like, how, I think I can do it. And he's like, well, you've got to work hard and, you know, and, and put your time in. He's like, okay, but how do I get my own TV show now? (laughs) And he just kept that throughout each break. And I, they were, I know that the producers were looking at us and I'm sitting here and we're like, all of us are like, like shut up, shut, shut up, up, shut up. We're going to get kicked <laughs> out. Just shut up. And uh, luckily we didn't. And he did not get picked. Uh, I think, oh. I think our group didn't get picked. So we were representing the Aggies, right? Mm-hmm. We were like, show us your A, right? Those mm-hmm. cool, the dark Royal blue shirts. And uh, they have a dance contest before the show starts to get everyone real warmed up. Right. Mm-hmm. And they'll pull like five people what from the this? audience. A church event? I know. It, no, it kind right. of feels like <laughs> yeah. it. They're trying to rev you up. And there was a girl from our group, and she... Did they serve funeral potatoes? Yeah, and then Marianne was there. She crashed the whole thing. <laughs> and... <laughs> but one one girl from our group, she was up there to dance, and she's, she's a pretty good dancer. And there was this, uh, like, two old ladies and other, other people. And there was this old lady who's just kind of, like, doing the twist and stuff. And the girl from our group was doing a backwards worm. You know, oh, the worm no. where you, you're on the floor. Uh-huh. But if you do it backwards, you can't see what you're doing. You kind of do this. She did this donkey kick when, and she kicked <laughs> this old lady. And she <laughs> this lady rolled over. Oh. Like if they got this on TV, it would have been a Hall of Famer. This oh, I, I thought this lady was going to weird how to put her down. Because she definitely <laughs> broke a hip, and I—I I mean, none of our group got up, so maybe that's why she didn't win the showcase showdown. But she definitely <laughs> got some money that day. <laughs> she won the showdown, and then someone got funeral potatoes a little bit later too. <laughs> so it all comes back to the funeral potatoes. No, anyways, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who knew that talking about Bryce's right was going to lead to this? No, Wait, it's so fun though. And, and was the, second... the experience better with Drew Carey, or is it better back in the day? Um, I it it's different because with with Drew Carey, I went with my family, and it was kind of funny okay. though because it was a couple years after my mom went through her cancer treatments and everything, mm-hmm. and so we we all had t shirts or most of us all had t shirts with you know my mom like beat cancer and everything. Mm-hmm. And Drew Carey talked to us in the in the crowd like we were right behind, you know, contestants row. Yeah. And and so we got some really good airtime. I have some, you know, great screenshots of me, you know, making sure that everybody looked like an idiot guessing one dollar. <laughs> but I just remember like during one of the breaks, Drew Carey was talking to my mom and my mom's like, yeah, I, you know, I. I had cancer and I, I won. Like you should pick me. <laughs> like first off, mom, you're begging. <laughs> second of uh, second off, Drew Carey's like, well, uh, you you should come back then for our cancer show. Like, oh. like oh, so you're rejecting my mother? <laughs> yeah, right now he's like, you're not gonna make it. But she just used her cancer card. You have to take her. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, save it for the Make a Wish show, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which Josh could have been on. <laughs> they do have a make a wish show, huh? Uh-huh. Do they? Oh, it, okay. 
I mean, I do have a nephew right now that's battling cancer, so. Yeah. Mm. Nah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, Spencer, thanks for the uh, the thing that made us go on a 10-minute tangent about never being picked for The Price is Right. I've got some trauma to go through on that one. We yeah, no George, we need to work time. this out. Let's talk we to no Blue. longer have time for the uh, man who invented Labradoodle called Dog Crossbreed his biggest regret. Oh, why? Tell me why, because I hate Labradoodles. My whole family has them. Do you really? We didn't spin a fuchsia, though. Oh, yeah. Hey, Josh, uh, turn the wheel real quick. Click, 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 oh. click, click, click. Oh, look. Fuchsia. No, Actually, no, it's poem. It's a poem. It's poem. Yeah, no, poem. Josh. <laughs> Give us a poem about Labradoodles. Go. Yeah. <laughs> and you have to use the word J. Robert Oppenheimer and biggest regret. And hypoallergenic. Oh, gosh. And orange. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Bow, wow, wow. Yippee, oh, yippee, a. Bow, wow, wow. Yippee, <laughs> oh, yippee, a. You're not supposed to All say right. in dog. Okay. Let's hear about okay. Labradoodles being horrible. <laughs> Many inve- inventors regret their most famous invention, the scientist behind the atomic bomb, the creator of the AK-47. And as he revealed in a 2019 interview, the dog breeder behind the Labradoodle, I quote, I opened Pandora's box and released a Frankenstein monster, Wally Conron told Australian Broadcasting Corporation when he was 90 years old, calling the dog breed his life's regret. According, And he is 90 years old. He has a lifetime of them. According to the BBC, the Australian breeder created the Labradoodle in 1989 to meet specific needs of one couple in Hawaii. The wife was blind and needed a guide dog, but her husband was allergic to the type of long hair often found in typical service dogs, Mm -hmm. such as labs. Conron's solution was to crossbreed a Pluto, a Pluto, a poodle. (laughs) It works. With a Labrador. That way, well, yeah, cartoon dogs are super hyper, hyper, yeah, totally, Mm -hmm. right? Crossbreed a poodle with a Labrador. That way his client would have a dog with the obedience and temperament of a lab and short curly coat of a poodle. The experiment produced some unintended consequences. Labradoodles are prone to a number of health problems such as epilepsy, hip dysplasia, and just plain being dumb. They're also incredibly adorable, which has had en- been enough to keep them popular pet breed despite their genetic baggage. Since the inception of the Labradoodle, designer crossbreeds have become a hot trend all over the world. The golden doodle, the French golden doodle. Uh, French bulldogs. Yeah, um, yeah. I was the gonna Saint say the doodle, like the Dana doodle. Yeah, the like, Chihuahua doodle. He he's too hard on himself because if that is your biggest regret that you added labradoodles to society, no, this, like this guy, this guy who has was the guy who There's made skeletons up the pub. In the closet. Yeah, <laughs> listen, <laughs> are pugs natural? We should find out. I don't think so. That, with that nose? And like, those no. eyes that hang on the top of the head? Yeah. Like, that's just so not natural. No dog breed is, quote unquote, natural. I, I will have to say this, though, about Labradoodles. I always laugh because my brother and sister-in-law have a Labradoodle. And this thing is the size of a horse, right? Like I tell them, Mm -hmm. you should be renting this thing out for kids' birthday parties every weekend. (laughs) Because Josh, as a great Dane owner, trust me, large dog breed owners love that joke. We tell it all the time. I do. I do. (laughs) Because I'm funny. Anyway, the thing is, is so my sister-in-law, right, did her homework, but she did didn't really do her homework like she didn't read the fine print on all the different doodles because she thought she was getting a small to mid-sized dog Uh, and all of a sudden like six months into this this dog is a horse and she wanted to get a golden doodle but they ended up getting a labradoodle completely like like just wrong, wrong temperament, wrong size, wrong everything. But you know, now it's part of the family now. Let me ask you too a question. Have you ever met a doodle that isn't super hyper and super dumb? No, uh, no. every single doodle. And like uh, each of my siblings has two. No joke. They have two, two? each. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're, these aren't beanie babies. And, and I'm not kidding. Collect them all. 
I'll take a doodle over like a pit bull any day, right? Because they're going to be nice dogs. But mm-hmm. as soon as you walk in the door, like paws up and you're like, dude, not every time. Mm-hmm. We know each other, dog. Like calm it down. And they just have so much energy. And then when they finally calm down, they follow you. You they, Maybe this is dogs. They follow you from room to room. They just no, will not just, leave you alone. dogs. And it's and, and being a cat guy, I'm like, uh, can I have my space, please? Dog. You know, and I guarantee there is somebody in the audience right now saying, well, you just haven't met my doodle. Right. Oh, trust me. Once you meet one doodle, you meet them all. Mm-hmm. And I know for a fact that at least one listener got a doodle because of a post I shared. Um, You're welcome, Jordan. Hmm. My, my cat bishop thanks you for taking that doodle. <laughs> <laughs> your cat bishop or your cat's bishop? Because there's that's different things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your cat no, bishop my... is like ten. Our fathers, yeah. Five. <laughs> See, my sis, my sister in law and brother in law have, they they have two golden doodles, right? Kind of the same yeah. thing all over you. One of them also gets so excited they always mm-hmm. pee, yeah. whether it's on the floor, on you, whatever. It, they just, you know. But see, at the same time, my boxer. Is kind of that same way. You get so excited. I mean, most dogs. And honestly, I'm just I'm a I'm a converted cat person. Like I, the best thing you can do is just get a Great Dane cat. Oh no, I'm honestly I'm done with dogs. Like I'm a hundred percent cat person. Well, Josh, what if you had a nice backyard, right? Like, what if you had a backyard that wasn't that ten was feet like... <laughs> by ten feet? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That you could let a dog run around, mm-hmm. bring it in, because dogs are going to show you love, right? And I think we're yeah. like, mm-hmm. bla- we're blasting Labradoodles, Golden Doodles, because they, they really are loving dogs. It's just right. sometimes it's they're, just they're just loving. extra. Mm-hmm. Loving. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like they're, they're like stalkers. The girl of dogs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, by the way, guys, uh, pugs, uh, if you were to ask me, not Google, they're one of the oldest dog breeds with origins dating back to 400 BC in China. So what happened um, to their originate, face? Um, we don't really know, but they are uh, originated from the Tibetan Mastiff we? and the ancient, ancient Pekingese. Uh, who's we? Josh, Josh. What happened to their face? Mm. Wuhan wet market. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Wait, is that what happened to all of us then? Four years ago? Smack right to the Pugs. face. <laughs> Wait, Pugs created COVID? <laughs> It's all revenge. Think about it. They have breathing problems. COVID gives breathing <laughs> problems. Okay. No, 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 we can't. <laughs> Going down the conspiracy theory rabbit hole. Oh, here. That's or actually really the pug hole. I'm yeah. actually connecting the dots right now, and I'm I'm on Team uh, Spencer right now. <laughs> that's Real actually rooster here, guys. Real that's, rooster. That's brilliant, actually. <laughs> yeah. Pugs started COVID in their lab in Wuhan. <laughs> That's right. Everybody will be <laughs> on pug now. <laughs> Everyone's eyes are just real buggy now. The top of our heads. And when well, when someone says you want to go for a walk, our whole heads swivel. <laughs> <laughs> We're all swiveled in our heads right now. Well, guys, we have two choices here mm-hmm. um, because we are getting close to time. We have a couple of voicemails. Uh, we can do those this week, or we can spend some actual time on them. I think we should or, take. I think we should take the phone calls. Okay. Yeah, let's I'm, take I'm the just, phone calls. Because yeah. we didn't take many last week, so. Don't even let me talk about Kent's movies. Mm-hmm. We'll get there. Hey, this is KP, uh, or the other Kate, uh, Keith Brown, apparently. Definitely not the Keith Brown that you find if you Google Utah County. Keith Brown, that is definitely not me. But anyway, I heard you call and ask for a call out wanting a recipe. So here we go. I have another recipe for you. This one is for... Korean short ribs or galbi. Absolutely love this stuff. So what you're going to do, and now you can actually cut this so it sounds a lot longer than, than it really is, you know. So just cut this out, Josh. Don't play this on the show. That's part of the joke for you. Uh, anyway, so once again, because these uh, ribs are cut crossways and uh, they leave a little flap of meat that's really thin, they're perfect for quick grilling, very, very yummy. Love them. Hey, talk to you later. Bye. I'm going to jump in real quick here because while he was talking, I had no idea what he's talking about with that name. And I don't even want to repeat the name because what I found is horrible. Uh, so, KP, I don't want to disrupt too much, 
but you made me do a Google search. I wish I didn't have to see. Can I leave it there? Um, yeah, you can leave it there. Yeah. But uh, KP, I'm sorry. I'm editing this episode and I'm lazy, so I'm leaving the whole thing in. <laughs> <laughs> that that's all. That's not lazy. That's that's good. It's content. Thanks, KP. Jess, um, I keep meaning to call in and then I forget because uh, that's the way my brain works. Anyways, uh, I just wanted to call in uh, because I wanted to address what, uh, oh, wait, hold on. I gotta go. What? <laughs> what happened? Um, she got kidnapped. Oh, she's very casual about it. I mean, don't you get kidnapped usually on a weekend? We'll call (laughs) Liam Neeson for you. Uh, No, Kent's looking studly. We're calling Kent. Yeah, I got a special set of skills. Oh, she's back. Hi, friends. It's Jess. Uh, Sorry, I don't don't use the previous message. That was my bad. Uh, My husband called me in the middle of trying to leave a voicemail to tell me about Final Fantasy. Anyway. Moving along, I keep meaning to call in. I keep forgetting. I just wanted to address what uh, Proud Disney Mom was talking about, about uh, Cody and uh, whatever. I don't remember the other guy's name. Uh, and the uh, the haunted house with Satori and Cody and the uh, tapping. Um, honestly, I believe that it's all completely fake. Uh, to me, it, it definitely had two different sounds to the knocking in the house. I definitely think they have like some sort of contraption set up somewhere that's like a pretty easy thing to do that a lot of illusionists actually do. And there's a lot of videos you can find about how to do it. Um, anyways, and then when they left the house and did it on like some random road in the middle of nowhere, I definitely felt like it sounded like either ankles or toes or something popping. Um, I, being hyper, um, what do I have? I don't know. My arms bend weird ways. <laughs> hyper mobility, that is what it's called. Being, having that, uh, it's always been pretty easy for me to like crack my toes and stuff. And it's definitely what it sounded like to me. Anyways, that's my opinion. Um, I think it's totally fake, and uh, there's a couple of YouTube videos that I watched on it, like one by a YouTuber named John Wolf was really good. He kind of went into all of it, and um, yeah, that's where I learned about it. Anyways, have a great day. I will talk to you guys later. Bye! Final Fantasy is a perfectly acceptable excuse to interrupt something. Yeah, I'm 65 hours into it. No big deal. It's fine. I don't have a PS5. I have to wait for it to drop on Steam. I'm still playing Madden 94. That's <laughs> a great hey, game. Yeah. I have that on my deck too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but I've been playing Deep Rock Galactic. If anyone wants to be a dwarf with me and mine some, okay. Some rock so and I, I miss I miss some context because I was gone for a week. Yes. Um, can you guys give me a TLDR for what Jess is talking about? Because it sounds like she's not a believer. Essentially, proud Disney mom Tanya Budge called in a couple weeks ago when you were gone and asked our opinion on whether these videos these uh evps and sounds knocks uh the human ouija board uh, that um oh gosh i can never remember uh satori uh, the the youtube video i can't remember off the top of my head again uh anyway whether they were fake or whether they were real if there was some validity to it and okay. if you know if it was fake then what you know how how they do it and whatever but yeah we had talked a little bit we addressed a little bit of it on that previous episode which you would have known Mm -hmm. if you had listened to it and (laughs) wow that's a good point (laughs) that's a good point like why am i explaining this i mean (laughs) i'm still working on your two and a half hour epic okay yeah Yeah, what you're five (laughs) minutes in (laughs) yeah (laughs) it's the snyder cut of the other show it is (laughs) It's true. Hey. Um, so did most people believe that it had some validity or are we kind of all um, doubting I, a little bit? Or I'm I'm uh, I'm usually skeptical of a lot of yeah. that just because I've 
I, I we've all been in that situation where we've been with people mm-hmm. who are obviously faking or manipulating what they're hearing. And, yeah. and so I think that's kind of, that's jaded me a little bit, I think. Um, mm-hmm. And then also my brother is probably one of the biggest skeptics when it comes to any evidence, especially in the paranormal, uh, you know, spirit kind of realm th- uh, of, you know, stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's just too easy to manipulate you know? you know, one of these days we'll we'll have to kind of go into maybe an October show or maybe some sort of Halloween show, kind of like the the uh, the narrative you put yourself into when mm-hmm. you're on a ghost hunt, right? That mm-hmm. sometimes if you're with like the right group and they are skeptics themselves or they're trying to just investigate, not for entertainment's sake, you can get pretty interesting results that you're still you still have to think about. Mm-hmm. But when you're kind of told a story by someone or a group. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's interesting and, and it really does put you in the frame of mind where you will believe it regardless. Yeah. If someone says that's a demon, you're like, Oh, okay. I, uh, yep. It said demon. You yep. know, my, my litmus is if it's convenient, then it's fake. Like, okay. Right, it was convenient. Like, Oh, we're putting on a show here. There's a bunch of group here and it's, this is the scariest thing I've ever, or the weirdest thing I've ever encountered. Yeah. Or this is the clearest DVP I've ever gotten in my life or in the world. It's probably fake. Right. And I think I really do want to do more of a deep dive where we can talk about this because, yeah, there is so much that I've experienced the good and the bad at investigations. And I think, mm-hmm. honestly, the the more I've investigated, the more I just kind of trust my intuition and kind of read the room. Like if something doesn't yeah. feel good, it's not good. If something's eh, then that is eh, right? So mm-hmm. it just, and I don't, I don't subscribe to the whole like, you know, this is the life story of the of the ghost that lives here, and you know, da right. da da, da. Mm-hmm. like, because we're here for entertainment. Who's to say that you know, if you are communicating with something on the other side, that they're not here for entertainment as well, right? You know, so yeah, I don't know. It just. Uh, uh, I mean, things get pretty boring after you've had the funeral potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. Um, but I'm excited. Like, I mean, I know early summer we'll probably be doing some hunts, yes. just like casual ghost hunts, and so I think that'd be pretty fun. And just kind of, I don't know. We should even kind of split off and just kind of take it seriously and see what I think so too. We get. Because yeah, there's yeah. there's no reason for us to put on a show. So. Yeah, maybe we should do some some giveaways with Patreon. Yeah, and, and do some. S- small group 10 people max yeah i will say the the i mean recently in the past what year and a half that we've gone together uh the groups that we've gone with have been amazing oh yeah and and almost like calm right i think when you go it's kind of meant to be calm Mm -hmm. like there's always Mm -hmm. like poking a dog with a stick sure but it's like you know it won't be like this crazy experience but if you do get something if you get some results you're like okay that was cool granted it's not gonna be like i'm haunted forever Right? right, that's when it's probably a little too convenient, like Spencer was saying. Yeah, yeah, like it plays exactly. into the story too much. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Interesting. So, yeah, yeah we, we'll need to nail down some some dates for that because I'm I am feeling the itch to go on an investigation, especially on a nice warm summer oh, absolutely. evening. Please. None of this October stuff. Can, can I throw it out there for our friends that are? Uh... Not super into ghosts and haunted things. What if we also threw in like a sky watch party for UFOs? Wait, so yeah. the people who aren't into ghosts, they would be into UFOs? Is that what we're saying? No, but they'd be into bonfires and roasting wieners with us at midnight. And I, I mean, I, yeah. Who does like... You have to mention wieners one, we... once a show. Yep. Yep. I there do. we go. It's a quota. <laughs> okay. So do we have any more I've phone calls? A wiener quota. Nope. No, that's it. Okay. Thanks, KP. Thanks, Jess. Uh, I know we're, you know, kind of rushed, but I want to make sure we mention some movies coming out this month. And so real quick, and you guys just let me know if anything sounds interesting. But like in March is pretty good for movies. Like we had some big, dumb movies, but at the same time, there were movies to see. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, some good ones. And so now with the first week of April, so this coming weekend, we have, speaking of ghosts, it won't be good, but the first omen. And this is uh, following what exorcist the believer or exorcist believer did which is 
reinvigorating a franchise, you know, starting it again, um, and just kind of going back to basics. Bringing uh, the franchise back from the dead. Yeah, which didn't really work for Exorcist, by the way. And I don't think will work for Omen. And I just think it's not a franchise people really care about. Am I, am I going to see it? Yeah. But still, I'm not very excited. But that same day, there's a movie I'm stoked to see, and it's called Monkey Man. Oh, yeah, with Dev Patel. Is that like Josh, an what adult is, what's version? What's Monkey Man about? Is it is it like an adult version of Nacho Libre? <laughs> um, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, I wow. know movies. You do know movies, apparently. No, wow, I, okay. I kind of did some research because I put a social media post out there yeah. asking people what movies they were excited for in April, and I looked at that. I'm like, huh. That looks like a yeah. like a very dark Nacho Libre. Yeah, it's like it's John Wick meets Nacho Libre. I'm for that. Hmm. Yeah, and I, yeah, I cannot freaking wait. So I'll actually be seeing it this week. Pretty excited. But on the twelfth, we've got one big movie. Actually, maybe not big. We'll see. But one major re-release. So the re-release is Shrek Two is celebrating its twentieth anniversary, and so Shrek Whoa. Two is being re-released in theaters. And no joke. I love Shrek 2. I remember seeing that in the theaters, and now I feel old. Yeah, I was just going to say, I'm like, I remember what, well, I watched all of them in the theaters. Yeah. Oh, man. Which is sad, because then you paid for 3 and 4. But Shrek 2 is an all-timer. I will be seeing this in theaters. I'll take my girls, even though we've seen it a handful of times. 20, 20 years? 20 years. Oh. I mean, I know. there's a 25th anniversary May 3rd, but we'll cover that in May. Yeah, we'll get there. Um, but the other movie, and maybe this isn't a big release, but it's like kind of what April has to give us. It's called Civil War. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm still, so stoked for that one. I'm still trying to figure that one out. I mean, it, Josh, what, what's it about? So is it essentially like fundamentalists or whatever that try to win back America? With no, guns? we don't. We don't. We don't know. Mm. Um, in this alternative universe, alternate mm-hmm. universe. Um, I wish it was alternative. Uh, in the alternate universe, Texas and California unite against the government. Which it, is how you know it's an alternate universe. <laughs> yeah, totally. And oh, yeah. and I think they did that. So hopefully, I'm really hoping this movie is nonpartisan. Because if it goes straight up like, hey, here's the Southerners. And they're against all, all, the, all the ones on the coast. Like, they'll be too obvious. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, you're just trying to say it's a sign of the times. It's too political on an election year. But I think Civil War is really trying to just placate everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this one stars Kirsten Dunst, Jesse Plemons, ensemble cast, but kind of just character actors. This is done by Alex Garland, who did Ex Machina and um, 28 Days Later. And then Men, which is weird. He's like an indie filmmaker, but this one is kind of a bigger budget, bigger scale. And people may not see this, but I'm hearing great things, which is hey, shocking. Kent. Yeah. If you want a fun comic to go along with it, mm-hmm. um, alternate take on the United States, Undiscovered Country by okay. Scott Snyder. Okay. Give that a check out. Is sure. this like Put out by Image Comics? Is this like the nerd equivalent to like what kind of wine goes with you know your wiener? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's kind Wait, of true. wine goes with. Mm, nope. <laughs> We're Mormon. Don't blame us. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the last week I want to cover is the 19th, because there's really nothing great coming out the last week. But there's uh, one cool horror release. I do love that we're getting these scary movie releases, because I don't know if I mentioned this. I think I did briefly, but La- Late Night with the Devil I saw last month. Total recommendation. Please oh, go see it. so bad. It's super great. Is it a horror but movie? I'm a... mad at you about that one, Kent. I know. I'm very sorry. Uh, Listen, I'll go again. I texted you about that months ago. Do, do you want to go again? Or do you want me to go with you? And I'll go again. Yes. Okay, let's go this weekend. In case I get scared. Okay. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> but the uh, the movie on the 19th coming out is called Abigail. And this is about, it's I think from the producers of Ready or Not. And if you saw that movie, you kind of know what to expect. But it's people breaking into this giant mansion. And they're like, yeah, we think no one's home. And they find this little girl. And they're like, okay. Let's get out of here. This is weird already. And the little girl's a vampire. Hmm. The, that's all I'm going to say. And it, it looks bloody. It looks fun. I'm down for it. And then that's all you're going to say. You just gave the whole plot away because she's kind of be sucking blood, and she's going to yeah. be killing. 
Like you just ruined Which, the whole movie, Kent. Listen, I didn't ruin it because I think the kills are going to be worth watching. Please bless. Okay. Uh, but the movie, I'm very actually. There's two movies that day, but uh, one is streaming. One is a big release. The big release is the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. I was going to say you haven't mentioned that one yet. Yeah. So this is uh, Henry Cavill's movie. It's it's a Guy Ritchie movie, and it think of it like Inglorious Bastards, but it's a kind of a different team. You know I'm editing, so I'm going to beep that, right? Yeah, oh, please do. I, I usually call it Ill, uh, Inglorious Illegitimate Children, but it's the other show. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but this one, it looks comedic. It's a Guy Ritchie movie, meaning fast-paced, and it's going to be have a lot of wisecracks and a lot of cool violence, and I'm there for it. And it's Henry Cavill in a full-on beard, like, all day. So he kind of looks like me right now with my beard. Yeah, I mean, we we're just saying that you look like a Greek Henry Cavill right now. You just can't see my butt chin. Actually, you look like Vincent D- D'Onofrio in uh, Jurassic World, which means which I can look. talk to it's dinosaurs. Good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. And, yeah. and then uh, Spencer, I don't know if this one is confirmed. I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> is that your Raptor talk? <laughs> I know how to talk to him now because of the beard. <laughs> That's. That's a seducing a raptor. Yeah. <laughs> well, then I'm. Oh, great! Here, here comes Blue. Yeah. Great, not not Blue, but Blue the raptor. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Marianne's gonna fight. Is gonna have to fight for my honor. Uh, okay, and then so Spencer, for you and I, we have a Netflix movie. It's Rebel Moon Part Two: The Scar Giver. And that's... Oh, here come more raptors. That was an angry call. <laughs> Actually, that sounded more like a pigeon. So Spencer and I are going to be down for this. Like, obviously, the first one wasn't well received. This is going to be kind of probably more of the same where it's kind of an, you know, it's a kind of a very edited uh, uh, continuation of the story. But Spencer, I think for more so for you and I, I think like June or July, we're going to get the director's cuts for both of those movies. But I'm still going to watch this one like three times. So it's all good. I, I should ask Stephanie when the director's cuts come out for those, if she wants to go to her parents for the weekend. Yeah, visit. right. We could watch six like hours a, of straight up Rebel Moon. Yes. With smoked meat. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. I'll make, smoked I'll make ham. Some brisket. <sighs> okay. Oh, let's I'll do, do it. pulled ham. Yeah, well, I don't want you to pull any ham when uh okay, those you are movies. into that one. Oh yeah. Have I ever made you my yes, I have. I made you my salted caramel pulled pork before. Yes. Oh, I need it again. Okay, I'm getting hungry. It's too late. I can't eat. I'm, I'm intermittent have some fasting. Easter leftovers. No, don't. It's too late. No. All right. So there we go. Um, I think with all that said, with this show, you know, uh, Jesus didn't die to bring you this episode. <laughs> Probably to keep us from this episode. <laughs> Josh, how about you take us out? All righty. You've just listened to the other show, starring Kent Dunn, Josh Hansen, and Spencer Myers. The other show is produced by Kent Dunn, Josh Hansen, and Spencer Myers. Show design and audio editing is done by me, Josh Hansen, and sales manager is Spencer Myers. The other show is generously supported by our friends on Patreon. A huge thank you to our Friends with Benefits tier. These friends are contributing a minimum of $25 a month, which in return comes with some rather significant benefits including the weekly off-the-cuff episodes of The Other Other Show, monthly bonus episodes, quarterly live Q&A shows, and exclusive swag and perks. A huge thank you to our favorite Brit, Jonathan Vaskar, the lovely and talented Mrs. Robinson, the one, the only Chris Anderson, Brandon from Popfly Cards, Lady Terry A. Finley, the proud Disney mom, Tanya Budge, the other Keith Brown, it's Rick, not Dick Smith, um, Dave, and of course, our newest friend with benefits, Melanie Milring. To support the other show on Patreon, visit patreon.com forward slash the other show to join. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the other show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, or wherever podcasts are found. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and X. To better connect with us and other fans of The Other Show, join our Facebook group, The Other Group. 
For past episodes, links to our other shows, and to shop for show swag, visit our website at theother.show. And remember, when you're not listening to me here on The Other Show, you can hear me on my other show, The Party in the Back. You can hear me on my other show, Bacon Cell. And you can find me testing wiener and juice box pairings. <laughs>